Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is Transformer Studio Series 83 Bumblebee Soundwave. Now, I just got Soundwave today thanks to a subscriber and fellow West Virginian, Jeremy. Jeremy and I met via YouTube a few years ago, and we kind of hit it off because of us both being from West Virginia. He sends me a message Monday asking if I wanted a Studio Series Soundwave. And I'm like, hell yeah, what do I owe you? And he says, man, on me, Merry Christmas. So Jeremy, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. So real quick, let's take a look at the packaging. We got Transformers Studio Series 83 Soundwave from the Bumblebee movie. We got Soundwave right there behind his plastic shield. Some great artwork of Soundwave there. Side of the box is a close-up shot of Soundwave Studio Series 83. Back of the package is robot mode and vehicle mode and the backdrop. And I can't wait to actually have hands-on with that weird vehicle mode. This side of the box, more great artwork of Soundwave and that cool Autobot logo kind of hid behind the plastic. So now, without further ado, let's get Soundwave ejected from his packaging and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, once you get Soundwave all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with a sheet of instructions that, as usual, is very well illustrated and fairly easy to follow. He also comes with his trademark shoulder-mounted rocket launcher, and this thing looks really good. A nice homage to his original G1 weapon. And he comes with this black rifle, which is not an homage to his original G1 weapon. This gun here looks more like the weapon he came with with the Titan's Return figure. Soundwave also has this backdrop here that portrays a Cybertron cityscape from the Bumblebee movie. So you can put Soundwave right inside there if you have the room to display your figure as such. Now, I unfortunately do not. And of course, we have Soundwave himself. Now, taking a closer look at the figure, I love the looks of this guy. He looks spot on to the way he looked on the big screen in the Bumblebee movie. Lots of great paint applications and molded details. The guy looks fantastic, especially this head sculpt. I mean, just check it out. That looks awesome. Now, at first, I didn't really like how he had the blue section right there in the middle of his mouth plate, but that's how he was in the film so I can forgive it. I love the paint applications there on the visor, but I think it's funny the way the visor is shaped. It almost looks like he's worried, <laughs> but that may, that may just be me. Nice gold paint applications right there on the chest, which is very reminiscent of the G1 figure, along with the gold highlights right there on the sides. Moving on down here at the waist area, he's got some nice paint applications that make it look like the buttons that was on the robot mode for, you know, his tape deck. So I do like that. Lots of nice throwbacks to the original Generation 1 figure. 
Moving on down, still more great molded details. Down here to the lower legs, we got more of the blue with gold trim. I really like it, and the white just really pops on Soundwave. I'm used to him being the navy blue and gray, but I like the blue and white, especially get some red trim on the wrists. And really, that's about it for the paint applications and sculpted details. Now moving on to the articulation. The head is on a ball joint. It can do a complete 360. It can look up. It can look down. The shoulders, they can go, or the arms, they can go out. They can go in. They can do a complete 360 as well. There is a rotation right there at the bicep and a bicep bend. And this is a double bicep bend, so you can get a nice deep bend. How many times am I going to say bend right there? There is no wrist rotation whatsoever, nor waist rotation. But there is rotation there at the hips. Legs can also go forward. They can go back, though they can't really go forward a lot. They're going to catch on this little section right there. So that's about as far as you're going to get. There is a deep, deep knee bend, and that's because that is a, another double joint, but that's for transformation. But still, you can get some good poses out of it. There is ankle rotation and a joint there at the foot that you can spin the foot around. I really like that. That adds a lot more posability to your figure when you can actually rotate the foot. So ankle tilt and an actual foot rotation. Now he does retain his G1 gimmick with the chest that can open up and it's really nice. A nice hard spring-loaded trigger right there. Pops that right out and he's got a very nice deep cavity for when we ever get the release of Ravage. Very unfortunate that Ravage did not come with this figure, but oh well, one can use their imagination. Ravage eject. Now taking a look at Soundwave's weaponry here, here we have the shoulder mounted cannon once again, and to attach that to the figure, you flip down this little section right here, which reveals this peg. So you're gonna turn sound wave around and plug that right into his back like so. So now you have the shoulder cannon. And while I'm at it, take a look at the back of the figure. No gaps whatsoever. And I really, really appreciate that. Usually on the back of the figure, it's very waffly. They did really good with sound wave. Though you do have a few gaps right there for the inner thigh, but I love how good that cleans up on the back. Now, you probably also notice there's another port right there, so you can put the shoulder cannon on either side. And then, of course, we have his blaster. Just put that in his hand like so. And there you go. You have Studio Series 83 Bumblebee Soundwave all armed and ready for battle. So now let's get Soundwave in his vehicle mode. Now, to get Soundwave transformed into his alt mode, the first thing we're going to do is remove the weaponry, the gun, and the shoulder cannon. And it's in there pretty tight. There we go. So now you're going to take his head and turn that completely around. And on each shoulder section, you've got these little flaps. Go ahead and bring those up, just like so. Now, underneath the arm, going to pop out that panel and rotate the fists in the panel and shut them right back up. Just like that. So now just go ahead and turn the figure around because this is where we're going to be working with everything. So what you're going to do is bring the arms up and over because this panel right here is going to cover Soundwave's face. So do that for both arms. Get that up and over, so there you go. Now what you're gonna do is rotate the arms around and see the little slot right there? That's gonna go on that peg. So just kinda manipulate the arms like so to get them to peg in on either side. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of manipulation to get it just right because you want to make sure those panels 
keep Soundwave's face hidden. So just a lot of adjusting to get it just right. So there we go. So we've got all of that done. Now you're going to rotate the legs like so. So the knees are pointing in. Go ahead and flip the feet up out of the way. And then you've got these panels right here on the front. Go ahead and pop those out. Both sides like so. And then there's a little section right there. You're going to flip this out as well. So you've got that going on. So now what you need to do is bring the legs up and fold the leg into the body. So go ahead and do this here, bringing it up and around. And you want to bring it in nice and tight. So you want this section right here to kind of match up right there. So get that in. Take this little section here and you're going to fold this down like so. And go ahead and do the other leg the same way. Fold in and around. Now I've transformed this guy a couple of times and one side is a little bit more difficult to transform than the other. This knee is a lot tighter, but you want to try to get it as flush as possible. Rotate this around. Make sure that little section folds in. Get it nice and tight. So you got something like that going on. Now you're going to take this little center section and you want to peg these together. This is actually a simple transformation, but it's just getting everything to line up and fit just right. So it still needs to be up a little tighter to the body. So now you've got that finished. You're going to take the feet, rotate the feet around like so, and then you're going to flip the feet over like this. And then right here, you got this peg on the arm that's going to slot into that tab. There we go. And do that here on the other side. Once again, it's all about lining it up just right. And of course, everything pops apart again. So let me go ahead and get him all cleaned up, and then we'll finish the last part of this transformation. Okay, now that I've got Soundwave all tabbed together, the last part of the transformation, you're going to take this section right here and flip up and turn this around. Then take this section, fold that up, and rotate it. So you've got these gold trim accents facing up. And just lower that down, snap it into place. And there is Soundwave's alt mode. Yeah. So... Let's go ahead and add the weaponry, see if we can improve the looks. You can take the gun, and it'll slot right into that hole up there on the side. And then you're going to take the launcher and collapse this section right here, and it's going to peg in on the other side. Now, of course, you can peg in whichever side you want. So now we've got Soundwave's alt mode all armed and ready for battle, and still can't figure out what the hell it's supposed to be. Is it a space freighter, a skiff, a land speeder? I mean, what the hell? I mean, I mean, I guess it's okay. You use your imagination with it. You got the little claws right here. You can kind of position those whichever way you want. Kind of bring it in a little bit more. I guess it's some kind of Cybertronian craft. You can pretend that's like the cockpit right there. I wish it was... Well, it does have a slight angle right there, so it can kind of look like a speeder. But, man, I just, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. And I thought the Siege Soundwave spaceship mode was weird. But I guess you could think outside of the box, and it may be something completely different. I mean, let's see here. Got this right there. That's a good to do. There we go. So maybe it's like a Cybertronian burger patty. Who knows? So, yeah, we'll try this out. So there you go, guys. Studio Series 83 Soundwave in alt mode. 
And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers Studio Series 83 Bumblebee Soundwave with Generation 1 Soundwave, War for Cybertron Siege Soundwave, War for Cybertron Netflix Soundwave with Laserbeak, and Kingdom Core Class Soundwave. Transformers Studio Series 83 Soundwave is a great take on the sound wave we saw from the Bumblebee movie. In my opinion, this figure is spot on to how he looked in the film, and I couldn't be happier with robot mode. Alt mode leaves a lot to be desired, but hey, he never transformed in the film, so Hasbro had to take some liberties to give him an alt mode, you know, to make him a transformer. But I still think they could have done better than a Cybertronian patty. So there you go, guys. Transformers Studio Series 83, Soundwave. So, does a Transformers Studio Series 83 Bumblebee movie Soundwave belong in your collection? Well, if you're a Soundwave fan or a Studio Series collector, absolutely. This is a great Soundwave figure as far as the robot mode's concerned. I love the sculpted detailing, the paint applications, the articulation, how close he looks to his on-screen counterpart. I can't complain about the robot mode. I mean, he's just an all-in-all -all great figure. I mean, no gaps, very well put together. You almost wouldn't tell that he is a Transformer, which leads to the alt mode. The alt mode, it leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, what the hell? I know Hasbro had to come up with something because... Soundwave here didn't transform in the movie, but you'd think they'd come up with something a little better than just squishing him and making him look like a pancake. But it is what it is. Now, I, for one, will probably never transform this figure again, but some of you others may enjoy the Cybertronian mode. But, you know, to each their own. But as far as the figure's concerned, I think he's great. So if you see one on the shelf, pick him up you are not going to be disappointed. And once again, another huge shout out to my buddy, Jeremy. Thank you so much for this guy. He is going to have a place of honor on my Soundwave shelf back there. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do offer channel memberships here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members, because it's your support that helps keep this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!